real people and uh, those who, who we know are actually now right in the kingdom of God just you know in a single peak we can already introduce them to the kingdom of God we are into different Bible studies and two of those yesterday whom I had the chance as I was driving they went by uh, they went by back and our neighbors upstairs I'm very happy because they are children but I'm happy to these kids at the back they're only like I don't know 11 or 9 years old but two of their brothers are joining us already. I'm very happy because the parents of these kids are, are both uh, households. You know, they are our neighbors upstairs. But the parents are allowing them to, to, to join church. As I said, uh, two of the boys are in the afternoon joining. And uh, maybe starting today, they also can be joining uh, us every Sunday morning. Jen, do you remember how the Lord brought the whole of your family? It started with Nico here. Nico was only seven years old. He cried so much and did not give up until her mother or his mother said, yes, Nico invited his, uh, his mother, Mama, go to church. We go to church because Tita Delia said so. <laughs> and you cannot believe, Nico, Nico is uh, one of our uh, keyboard players. Okay, this morning I would like to entitle my sermon, See Everything through the master's eyes. I shall speak about to how we respond or even we act when situations happen unto us. Situations of blessings or situations of trials. Okay, today, okay, now I'd like us to all stand and uh, let's open our Bibles. That's our key verse. I'm asking us to all stand up in honor for the reading of the word. Kind of like this, I love the white church members today. Well, it'll be the rain. Amen. So let's share Bibles together. Uh -huh. I will be reading them from the English Standards version. I, I have the slide on there. But I'm not sure because they are a bit little. If you still can see them that distance. I will lead us in the reading. Anyhow, you just follow after me as I will do it. Here we go. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonor you I will curse. And in you all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go into the land of Canaan. God bless the reading of this word. Okay, a few more little trivia before we go for our prayer. By the way, Abraham became born again when he was 75 years old. That's, that's how the Bible told us. And uh, his real or original name was not after all Abraham. His first name was Abram. Abram. And his wife's was not Sarah after all, originally. It was Sarai. Now names before in the past do have meanings. Unlike today, with what the parents, our parents be like to name us, that's how they name us. Abram means a sterile man. Or a man without sons, just imagine. And then Sarai, what, what a pair they were, because Sarai as well, as well is meant literally a woman without children, or a spiritual woman. But we ought to see then, or we already know what happened to them. The same people experienced the power of God, and they received the grace of the Father. But what happened, they became the father and the mother of faith. Parents of faith. Now, 
I'd like us to bow ourselves, our heads down, and we can meet ourselves to amen and amen. Can we give God a clap of praise? Let us be seated. Brothers and sisters, exactly I would like to preach this morning on faith. Because God wants us to see everything that comes along our way to nothing but by faith. Every single thing that crosses our path. For example, when blessings happen, come into our lives, the words that will be coming out right away from our mouths will be words of praise. Say, Thank you, Lord, for all of these blessings. Why praises? Because when, you know, uh, words to come out from our mouth are praises or thanks when we are blessed. They are manifestations of faith. Do not brag around and shake us. What is this? I strike your shoulder and say, hey, these are the results of my cleverness. This happened because of my intelligence or my brilliance. Though uh, we say that, you know, uh, most of them are exactly the results indirectly of your, uh, of your own efforts. But let me tell you, everything brothers and, ha brothers and sisters happened, did happen because God favored on you. Amen. Amen. That is why... As I said, God the Father would want us to see everything, I'd like us to say the word everything. Everything. That comes along our way with the, with the eyes of faith, with the eyes of the Master. So blessings when they come, right away praise God. They may be little, they may be uh, bigger, whatever the size or... Uh, even if even if you dislike it, sometimes it's not the the kind of color that you wanted. It's not uh, the kind of face that you wanted. Uh, you you may not be knowing that perhaps God is just testing the attitude of your heart. Nonetheless, say thank you. Amen. 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 Or brothers and sisters, when trials as well come, do not whine. Do not be tempted to murmur or to complain. Rather, you know, when, uh, when you are in trials, speak the word of God. You know, continue still to praise and thank Him because Romans 8.28 declares, and everyone knows this, let's commit ourselves to it uh, in memory because this word is for you and for me, the Bible said, but all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to His purpose. Whether blessings or trials, either way, all of them are working for our benefits. All of them are working for our blessings. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. You know what, brothers and sisters, let me present to you. You know, talking about blessings, automatically, we can easily construe them in the eyes of faith. Of course. Uh, why, why I have this new phone? Why I have this new iPad? Why I have this... A new house? Why have this new car? Why have this new promotion? Why have these uh, new connections? And right away, you release the word of faith out from your mouth. This happened because God favored me. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I believe as what I experience and I, I, I saw personally how the Lord is exposing our lives, not so much on our temporary losses. This I would like to pound more, brothers and sisters, this morning because as we continue to walk in this journey that God endowed unto us, this gift we call life, I'd like you to look to the next person beside you and tell that brother, tell that sister, life is a gift. Come on. Life is a gift. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. We will always have our losses, our losses, now and then, do not all the time, but there will be some particular uh, instances or seasons in our lives where those we would have wanted to be ours easily just have gone out from our hands as like smoke that tapped out and they're gone forever. And you fall your tears and you lament and you are sad and you are very sorry, so much sorry. And you said, why did I lose those? Now let me tell you, as we grow in the process, as we follow the Lord, it's really part of our, uh, it's, it's really, they really are part of our journey that we can have what this I call temporary losses. 
Can you say that two words with me? Temporary loses. Temporary loses. By the way, all loses to a child of God are only temporary. Any kind of loss you may have are only temporary. I still can remember Sister Vicky and uh, Brother Nolly. Shy was yet 13, 14 years old, Ate. I cannot believe how Ate have grown and become such a beautiful young lady. Amen. In those times, I would go and visit uh, Brother Nolly and Sister Vicky, their humble house. And uh, I think two years after they got born again, there was that fire uh, that, you know, raised to the ground their neighborhood. And it was such a loss, wasn't it, Atishai? But they only did count how many, uh, how many months, I would say, the most seguro, a couple of years, that the Lord restored back the house. And see the house, the house is, uh, is better, the house is more beautiful. And I know God is not yet done. God will gonna give Brother Lord and Sister Vicky even a better and a, and a more beautiful one. Everybody says amen. amen. Uh, this Sunday is the last uh, of Jen. We're gonna pray for you le later, ha, Ate. Uh, Pierre, Jen will, uh, I don't know, within this week, Siguro, fly back now to to Saudi. Uh, we can have you for eight months more. Jen, praise God. Uh, Sister Rose's family is really very uh, precious uh, to Sister Delia and me. Of course, everyone's family. Uh, we'd like you to know that all of you, number one, are very precious and important to the eyes of God. Number two, all of you are very important and precious to our heart, Sister Delia and my Sister Delia's and my heart. Amen. Amen. Praise be to the living God. It was four years ago, Jenniba. We thought that we lost because Papa was sick. We lost everything we thought. And uh, there was alteration, there was you know a sudden change that happened to the direction of comfort and uh, convenience of the family. There was that loss. But later on, as we compare to how the Lord is already blessing the family of Sister Rose and uh, Jen and the entire family, ladies and gentlemen, like what I have said a while ago, losses that may happen into our lives are only but just temporary. Amen. I like to say the word temporary. Temporary. Sometimes God allows, God allows things to be gone from our lives that He can replace them better. Amen. 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 Let's give that a clap. Of <laughs> we may lose 10 pesos and you're worried about it because you, it was your last not money, it was your pamasahe going home. Let it go. <laughs> One of the words that we have to learn is when we will have losses, uh, by faith, learn to let it go. Amen. Learn to release it. You know why? Because if you will keep to remember and uh, be sad forever with what you lost, you will go sick and you know you cannot move on and God cannot prospect you for a better blessings. Amen. You cannot tell that, you know, as we walk, as you walk, you don't have fear. So you, you're forced to work. You, you're forced to walk. And as you walk, you know, in the, uh, in the fairs on your way home, you saw a hundred pesos. You see, you cannot, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot limit God because God has more than thousands of ways how can He get, how He can get us across with His graces and His blessings. Everybody just say amen. 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 Let's give God a clap of praise. We're going to see a little bit about Abraham because the story, our passage, Genesis 12, is about Abraham. Same man whom we call as the father of the faith. Don't you know that this introduction in the Bible was right away a temporary loss? Abraham, the father of faith, as he was being introduced by God as his man in Genesis chapter 12, right away, I was, I was so surprised that what, what right away appeared to his calling was a loss, a temporary loss. Say the word temporary loss. Temporary loss. It's, it's what I really would want to pound in, in our hearts right now. Now what losses we may have, the only are just but temporary. Say it one more time, temporary. Temporary. What are the, lo 
what, what are those losses? Abraham. Now, Abraham, his uh, former previous name. The Lord told Abraham, I want you to leave your family. And I want you to go into an unknown direction which I am leading you. Now, tell me, isn't that a loss? Now, Abraham was also uh, an Asian, you know, Middle East, Asia. And we have this common uh, custom where, like Filipinos, we really are very much attached to our families and our, uh, and our homes. Hello, amen. amen. Did you experience that when you were first time away? What, how was it to you? Huh? Huh? Uh, see, Aya, when uh, she, was, she was to really go and fly for Manila and then to Saudi, I intentionally did not want to uh, drive them <laughs> uh, to the airport, but I didn't have no choice because it was early morning, uh, 4.30. Why I didn't want to drive? Because I didn't want to cry. I didn't want to see my, my favorite daughter. Uh, I only have one daughter, so my, she's my favorite daughter, uh, to leave away. And Sister Delia would have to shake me. You gotta, you gotta drive us to the airport. So I drove Aya. And she was pulling her trolley and then embraced her mother and kissed her mom. Of course, embraced and kissed me and told her mom in a whisper, Mama, I cannot see you in two years. And that's how the emotion started to, uh, to break. I, I turned around because there are many people on first flight. I turned around because, you know, my, my tears were about as well to fall from my eyes. Even when she reached, you know, uh, in Saudi, though, her tita was there, uh, is there. And later on, like three months, her uh, elder cousin is also there. But even to now, when, uh, you know, when we chat, thank God for our technology today that, you know, the person who may be living at the other side of the globe can be just that, you know, close to you. You can talk face to face. I mean, not by letters, not anymore by weeks, uh, or only by, by audio, but by, uh, what is this? By camera, you can see the person, talk to him, up, uh, you know, I'm, I'm such an emotional person. But why is she that? Because she's not used to be away. Malil is. You know, she's been all around. Seeya was her first time to be away. Actually, her... Her longest to be separated from us is, uh, I mean, he, her longest to travel was only in Pagadian when she was only like two years old. I mean, Sia was just a homebody. And then suddenly, now I can just imagine how was as well the feeling and the challenge for it uh, to Abram and for his wife. Are you still there? Hello, amen. I like it to poke somebody say temporary losses. Temporary. The Lord was a total stranger to Abraham. Because you know the family of the family of Abraham, his uh, his grandfather, or rather his father, Haran, they were worshipping idols. Their their God is not uh, Jehovah God. You know, uh, their city was in the city of Ur. Ur was only a few distance and few miles from the, from the city of Babel. You know how uh, idolatry and polytheism started, you know, in Babel? And Ur was only like distance, how many, uh, how many uh, miles or kilometers away? So Ur was influenced with so much idolatry. And God was a total stranger to Abraham. Nonetheless, he revealed himself to this to the simple and ordinary man, a nobody. And God challenged him, I want you to leave your family of idolatry. And follow me because I will bring you into a land that flows with milk and honey. I will bring you into a land that I am promising to you. You just imagine how were the losses. How was the gamble that Abraham must have risked at that time at that moment. Are you still there, brothers and sisters? Amen? Amen? I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. To how the Lord Jesus said, And everyone has left houses of brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms 
for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. Amen. Amen. Temporary loses, ladies and gentlemen, do have like corresponding blessings. Loses that we will have to let go because of a matter of surrender and dedication to God. God shall re God shall send back and seek to it to return so many and even better than what we lost. Are you still there? Amen. Amen. Let's give God a cup of praise. Now listen. Abraham's calling is always analogous to our introduction to Christ. I like us to say the word analogous. Analogous. Equivalent. Meaning equivalent. The Lord said in Matthew 16 verse 24, that Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So when we follow the Lord, there will be certain loses. That is definite. To happen into our lives carnal uh, carnal things that will uh, surely you know dissipate and be gone you know in the trade and in the exchange because we have followed the Lord we have embraced the Lord Jesus ladies and gentlemen when we follow Christ a lot of things we hold dear God will uh, confront us. There are there are things we hold there. Say say the word hold dear. Hold <laughs> dear. That are uh, precious to us. You know when uh, when the Lord uh, when we hear His voice and when we embrace the Lord and follow Him, God will confront us, and we don't have choice but say, Lord, I'm yielding. I surrender them. That is why I have this question to you, ladies and gentlemen. When you follow the Lord. What you, what you already had lost. The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 said, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Amen. Apostle Paul, what he lost the most was his prestige was his pride because Apostle Paul was a man of great stature on his time when the Lord called him Amen, Amen. are you still there? Amen. Uh, I remember Pastor Rick our layman pastor in uh, Talusan we are now going to be about to be 10 years in our ministry in Talusan thank God uh, before he gave his life to the Lord, he had all of the vices. And one of those are, you know, he has this farm where uh, he employed, you know, a staff, a farmer, uh, to keep more than 20 heads of uh, fighting cocks. You know, because uh, in the island, uh, Ulutanga, are you still there, amen? Mm -hmm. There are no other leisure time, you know, for business people because they are Chinese individuals. They don't have uh, other le leisure time. You know, come on Sunday, Monday through Saturday, you know, they work harder and uh, that's, that's how uh, life, life is in the province. And uh, they have their opportunities, they're giving their best. So come the Sunday, you know, uh, Chinese people and businessmen, they go, uh, what is this, they go to the cockpit and have, have their games. I did not confront the brother. Because the Lord spoke to me, you're he, the, uh, this brother may be offended. Just show the love of God. Just, just show the, uh, the mercy of the Father and the grace of God. Let, let me tell you, God doesn't hate any, uh, any sinner. God only hates sin. Amen? Amen. You know, when, uh, when a person, when a gay comes to God, or when, when I say literally, when a gay comes to church, do not chide and say, you cannot come here. Amen. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. For example, when a, uh, when a thief, we know in our neighborhood, who is so wor worse and then got born again and comes into church, do not lock the door. Hello. Amen. Amen. Or for example, you know, uh, drug addicts or even drug pushers, when they come to the kingdom of God, uh, do not close the doors. But rather, you know, with open arms, welcome them. 
Because that is how the Lord Jesus Christ, He said He came uh, to seek and save that which are lost. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Let's give God a cloud of praise. Make the story short, it was also a February. <laughs> and uh, he was in the hospital and he gave himself, he gave his life to the Lord. And to make long story short, we started the ministry. He just came, or rather he just called me one morning and told me, Pastor, I just, I just felt that I do not, I do not need anymore my, uh, my, my roosters. You know, he's fighting cocks and you know what happened? <laughs> He told me, Pastor, I butchered them and uh, and ate, you know, our our rooster in our lunch. It was our it was it was our dish and give some to our neighbors. And I did not tell her, I did not tell him to butcher. I did not tell him to dispose. It was just something that came out from his heart. Hello, are you still there? Amen. Mm -hmm. He lost all of those chicken, but you know what? He gained Christ. <laughs> Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. I'd like to ask you, what you already lost? You lost your pride? You lost your ego? Uh, you lost your vices? Uh, or or even, even further, what, what certain loses you lost already? Now let me tell you, God is not blind or only plain blind. That is, He doesn't know, He's not aware what of those. Let's just ready ourselves, but ladies and gentlemen, what things are happening or already had happened, let us see them through the eyes of the Master. Amen? Let's see them through the eyes of faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like you to look to the next person beside you and say, they only are temporary losers. Amen. Let's give God love and praise. Come on. What time? Many of you were already around in church. Uh... We were in our old building because uh, the building had, had a common entrance. Our, our old church was intruded by a burglar, you know, destroyed one of our locks and was able to gain entry. Our old instruments were stolen. You remember those apps? <laughs> uh, and, and also our amplifier and everything. One cleaning at the time was, uh, you know, our late sister who's now with the Lord, Michelle, came to the house and shivering, telling me, Pastor, trying to explain to me, when I reached a church, I just, uh, I just wondered and was surprised what happened because, you know, our, our magazines were littered all over. And I had not seen our guitar and I had not seen and she was a little uh, apprehensive or, I don't know, defensive. Telling me about those, she she could be think, thinking that I would uh, what is this? Uh, mad at her and uh, and blame her or what? And and you know what? Our church was yet on the growing process at the time. Thank God we still are growing. Amen. Amen. But you know what? On that moment, I felt deep inside my heart. You know the agitation and the fear and the desire factor that I felt. Of course. We prayed for all of those instruments in years. And our guitar, actually, we, uh, every Sunday we kept like how many, how many hundreds? And we paid, we paid to the sister who was selling something. And uh, all suddenly, uh, you know, a burglar just came in and stole it. I tell you, uh, that was hard. That was tough. But let me tell you, when you are confronted with certain losses in your life, what is the right attitude? What must be the right attitude? Do you think that we should show, or respond, or react? Do you think it's gonna be fear? It's gonna be what is this? Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be panic, panic. Or instead, you allow the grace of God to work in you and restore what the losses you have. Amen. Amen. Say it with faith. Faith. Say the word faith one more time. Faith. faith. Not now. One day, kids. Let's just, just allow Amos on April 24. But when you will have your own children, you, you will know what I'm saying. The greatest, the greatest uh, blessings that 
a couple can be receiving from God Almighty are not the money, are not the material things, are not the latest phones, whatever. Great. Aya and Dalil were growing, uh, they already were. We could not hug and we could not kiss them. Because, uh, you know, they have their world already. Kind of shy already. So it was uh, 2007, Sister Delia came to me and told me, I think I'm positive, I'm pregnant. Oh, wow. After 14 years, we're very happy. And I just so announced it and tell everyone. And so was everyone. Sister Vicky was very happy then. Uh, we learned it on a January, but on a February, I think end of February, she was just bleeding. And then we went to her ob -Gain, and the ob said, Sister Dells, I think we need to subject you into a procedure, or ano yung raspa? Uh, because actually, Sister Dells, you have a pregnancy, but your pregnancy is incomplete. Baby is gone. No nothing there, there no nothing inside your, inside your womb. And what a devastation was it. You know, when you are expecting and the expectation actually just popped. Hello, hello, are you there? Amen? Amen. Say the word losses. Losses. Sister Delia was in the hospital and 